Hi, my name is Mel Wolverson with the Division of IT at the University of Missouri. I'm here to talk about the Zoom app today and give you a little bit of detail on this desktop app. Now, although I'm talking about the desktop app here, the iPad, iPhone, Android app is extremely similar. So once you've seen this, you can probably do those as well. Down at the bottom of the app, I'll zoom in here. Home, meetings, contacts, and chats. Let's go over that first. Home is where you can start a meeting immediately, both with the video live and without the video turned on. That's your camera is what that's talking about. You can join a meeting that has been previously scheduled. You can schedule a meeting and you can do an immediate share screen. And we'll do part of that later, but let's go on to our second option, which is meetings. Meetings allows both upcoming and recorded. So upcoming shows you all of your meetings that you have scheduled currently, and you can hover over them to see start, uh, where you can start the meeting immediately. You can edit the meeting, so change the time or something. Uh, you can delete the meeting entirely, or you can copy the meeting if you're having a similar meeting at a different time. Now, if you delete the meeting, it will not necessarily delete that meeting in Outlook. Uh, so you want to double check and make sure that it's deleted in both places just to make sure. Let me go to the recorded tab up at the top. Let's highlight that. We've got a few different options here because at the top of the app, you notice I have the pro account. I can record either on the cloud or on the computer. My first recording here is on the computer. Uh, so it's saved to the desktop and uh, you can see that I can play the video. I can play the audio only because when you record locally and in the cloud, either way, it records both a video file and an audio only file. You can also open the file's location or delete the file entirely. If I scroll down, you can see that the rest of these are saved in the cloud. So therefore, if I hover over them, you see it only goes to open. And what that's going to do is it's going to open the web page to that particular webinar, which will then let you download it, listen to it on the web, share it if you want to. Lots of different options with those cloud uh, options, but you have to select open and go to that website first, which means you need to have internet access to access those webinars. Back to the bottom, let's select contacts. Uh, contacts has company contacts, and you can also create a favorites list. By default, this does not add in university contacts, kind of like your email does. Uh, this does not do that. However, every time you have a conversation with someone, it adds them to your contact list, your recent contacts, and then you can reconnect with them here. Chats, that's for when you don't necessarily want to have a voice or video conversation, you just want to have a quick uh, text message conversation. This is one way to do that if you'd like to use it. Most of the time you'll stick with home. One of the first things I recommend once you've looked at the app and set it up is to go to here where you see the green dot next to your name. And I suggest you go to my profile. That's going to take you out to the Zoom website. You can check your profile information and you can update that information if you need to. I highly recommend checking it just to make sure everything's okay. So let's go there next. Here we have my web profile information. There are a few things that I think you should check and probably update. First of all, change your image. By default, it's just a blank image, a little icon, and that's not gonna be what you want for a meeting because if you don't have video or your video is not available for some reason, the picture may display instead. Otherwise, you just get a black box with your name on it and it's hard for people to connect to that. Also, I highly recommend that you check your time zone. In most cases, we haven't had any problems with the account time zone, but it is good to double check and make sure that you are in the correct time zone for your account. If you need to change that, you can select edit and then select your own time zone. You can also check your user type, whether it's pro or free, from here. While we're here, let's look at some other settings that you might need to change. Over on the left, I'll select meeting settings. Starting off, uh, we have multiple different options for audio. I recommend that both telephone and computer audio be chosen as your default uh, because we have both of those at the university. I recommend selecting join before host. That option turned on allows people to get into the meeting before you get there. And it also allows people to continue the meeting after you have left. So it makes your meeting much more flexible. In the in-meeting basic options, you can turn on the chat 
and you can also turn on a private chat. So you can allow one person in the chat to speak to another person in the chat privately. If you have a problem with that, maybe your group has a little back chatter going on during a webinar or a conversation, you can turn off private chat and that's perfectly okay. Uh, I do recommend leaving the chat on, the basic chat, because that allows people to ask questions and also let you know if their audio is having problems. Further down, I highly recommend turning on co-host. It allows you to have a co-host for your meeting, which is highly recommended. That way, if something happens to your audio, if something happens to your video, if your internet entirely goes down and you have to stop the meeting, they can take over the meeting and they can help people out. The meeting doesn't just end. So I highly recommend having a co-host. Uh, they can also run questions for you, uh, run other options for you in the chat while you are busy sharing your screen or presenting information. Really, really helpful. Highly recommend that. Annotation, the whiteboard, allowing remote control and nonverbal feedback. All of these are available to be turned off or on. There's one option in the in-meeting advanced options that I highly, highly recommend you turn on. I'll scroll down here. Here we go. Show a join from your browser link. This allows people to watch your webinar or watch your presentation without having to download an application. This is so important because so many people here at the university have their computers locked down, particularly at the hospital and hospital locations. And so this allows them to watch without having to download it and install anything. There's also plenty of people out in Missouri and other locations who simply don't know how to download and install the Zoom application. And so this allows them to watch the webinar or the event without worrying about that process. So highly recommend turning that on. And again, that is in the in-meeting advanced options. Those are the main options I wanted to show you guys. So I'll minimize that and return to the app. In the app in the top right corner, there's a settings link. If you open that up, there's a whole bunch of other options that refer specifically to the meeting and the app. However, any settings that are duplicated from the website should sync from the website and update here. And likewise, if you update them here, they should also update on the website. That way you can keep multiple devices synced with your settings. Another way to get back to the website is to click Advanced Features and then Enable Advanced Features. That takes you back to the advanced settings on the website. Now that we've set our default settings, let's schedule a meeting by clicking Schedule. That will open up a dialog with all of your options for your meeting. You can set your topic name. That will be the subject in the email that goes out. It will also be the name of a lot of the recordings and folders and things like that. So you really want to think about this name. Set your date and time. Set host and participants to off so that their video is not on when they first arrive. Set audio options to both and definitely select advanced options to expand that setting. Under advanced options, make sure enable join before host is checked so that people can come in early and leave after you. Check mute participant on entry because you don't want people coming in with feedback and hot mics before you're ready. Also, you probably want to use personal ID if you have the pro account so that you can use your regular link that you use for all meetings. You can add an alternative host here if you'd like, but you can also add them during the meeting, just set them as host, and that works as well. At the bottom, we see different calendar options, Outlook, Google Calendar, other calendars, that's what calendar you want to use to schedule the appointment. We saw a lot of these options in the settings. That's where you set the defaults. This is where you set these options for this specific meeting. When you're done, select Schedule. This will open up an invite in whatever calendar you use. In this case, Outlook. Notice the subject of the meeting is here in the subject. Also, the location is the link. Down below in the body, you see Mel Wolverson has invited you to a scheduled Zoom meeting. You can change that content to say whatever you want, but below that is content that you absolutely need. There is a link to join the meeting, and they will need that to click on it to join the meeting. 
The phone numbers below allow them to call in instead of using their computer audio. And if you are allowing call in, then you need to have that information as well. In the two box, you can use your contact lists, your distribution lists. This is just a regular Outlook meeting invite. So you can use anything that you would normally use in Outlook for a meeting. When you're done, hit send, and it should add to your calendar and send just like any other meeting invite. And that's all there is to it. Again, my name is Mel Wolverson with the Division of IT. Thank you for joining me in this three-part series on Zoom.